Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Factorio. In today's episode we are going to complete a whole bunch of necessary steps in order to be able to craft the science packs. With our new situation we now have enough materials to build everything with beacons and speed modules and we also have enough solar panels and accumulators. It's now time to ramp things up and make it much more convenient for me. I already prepared the first step, namely in making the belts and the inserters. However, what I would like to accomplish after that is make a station for me that is gonna automatically craft everything I need for base building. At the moment this is what I'm doing here at the starter base, but I would like to abandon this project and actually make something much more intriguing, so I don't have to walk my spider too far. I think a good spot to do it would be right here. Actually, what do I want to craft? I would like to see some belts. Yeah, actually all types of belts and almost all types of inserters. We also want to craft power poles, so we're gonna need sticks. Jeez. Ah, I probably want a stack of pumps and train stops, so the best thing we can do is probably have many, many train stations bringing in all the materials. I mean, in the end, we almost want to craft everything, right? All the way up to concrete. So we're going to need even iron. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I think the way we're going to do it is we're going to start with train stations with the basic materials. And then right here in this corner, we're going to start with the crafting process. Honestly, it would be intriguing to make a sushi belt type of crafting system, but I fear it's just not going to be efficient enough. However, I already have a great idea for a sushi belt contraption that is going to take care of the science pack. So we basically only need one single belt to feed all the science packs to the science labs. And that is going to give us the opportunity to explore the sushi belt concept a little bit. First things first, I would like to leave lots of space here. So at least, yeah, let's go three or four. Let's do five. So with that distance in mind, this is going to be our first train station. We only really need the space for one single train. That would already suffice. And then we can make our way back. Okay. We then want to set up an unloading station. And actually thinking about it, we might want to move this over slightly. Sorry, train. There you go. I wanted to accomplish something like that. Let's grab this again and move it over. Jeez, oh, what am I doing? But yeah, like this, it's going to be much more manageable. And because we probably don't need as many materials, we could do something like this. I wonder, could we just all make them storage chests or even passive provider chests? We will then have the robots grab all the materials from these chests. And because we have so many chests, we should have enough materials. I mean, at least for the items, for the liquids, it's going to be a different story. We only really need lubricant, right? I don't think there's anything we want to craft that requires anything else. No, actually there's something. We also require water. Also, if we want to make explosives, we might need something else. No, still just water. So I think what I'm gonna do is make the first two stations a water and lubricant station. So I have to leave enough space. We don't really need that much space, just a little bit more. And we can conveniently hook back up to the train network. Yeah, there we go. Something like this, I believe, is gonna work with all passive provider chests. Now, let's set up a RoboPort. I should have a couple of them. And I want to make sure we overlap the chests with the logistics network. So, approximately here would go the first, and then we want to bring this all the way over. Also, cover the chests over there. Now, maybe we can make this a little bit more even with the other side, so that we have it in the center of the train tracks. And then we can have the same thing here on the other side. And so the robo ports are evenly distributed. And now all I have to do is copy this over a couple of times. Let's actually go ahead and do that. We can do two more stations. Yeah, there we go. And this one would be in the way of the robo port. So we'll have a little interruption here before we have the next sets of stations. Let's also go ahead and connect all the rails. There we go. And we're only gonna have one light here in the beginning. So trains will have to wait at this place. And I think I'm even gonna take away this chain signal. So as soon as they are in the station, the next one can go. They also need to be able to get out of here naturally. Also same story here with the signaling. All is gonna be one color and once the train is in this section, the next one can go. 
Okay then, time to set up these stations. Now, I want to make sure we do this correctly with the numbers. We can only have one train in here and I want to make sure the train is able to completely empty itself. The question is, do I really need this many chests? I think we can reduce it to two chests per train. If we quickly check out a train, they have 40 slots. And then checking out a requester chest, it has more than 40 slots. So that is exactly what I wanted to see. We are also going to make sure we actually connect all of these chests together. Let's just go ahead, briefly fix the other tracks here. I should be able to copy over this part, including the red wiring. I'm going to power up the robo port so the flashing finally stops. And after that, we have to decide what materials we want to let into the mix. Generally, I would like to see almost all materials represented here, even if sometimes we will not be using them, just so that I have a centralized location where I can pick up everything produced in the base. There might be some exceptions such as sulfur and liquids, where I just never felt the need to have it in my inventory. I'm gonna set up the liquid station first. There's gonna be unload water. We want to enable a train limit of one. Send or enable, disable. And we wanna check for the water here. If it is below 70k, that's what we decided is the acceptable number so trains can still fully unload. We're gonna copy this over for this station. However, here we want to unload lubricant. So unload lubricant and we also want to change that to lubricant and we should be seeing a train already arrive. Yeah, there we go. One train is on its way. You shall not pass. Okay, <laughs> I was a little bit too late. There you go. We got the lubricant in the joint. That actually went really quickly. We can now also see the station is closed. Okay, we're going to do some other materials here. Iron, copper, steel and plastics, that's for sure. Then we have two more stations. I think I'm just going to do the engine units because they can be paired up. And then we continue with all of these materials here at the bottom. So let me actually go ahead, set this up and I'm going to be right back. All right, as you can see, I progressed a little bit further. We now have all the basic materials or many of the basic materials, but it occurred to me that something is off. Namely, what happens if all the logistics robots are going to take out from the leftmost chests first? So let's say all of these chests here empty out and then at some point the station gives green light, which means a new train is going to arrive. However, all of these chests here are empty and some of these are still almost full, which means only the backside of the train is going to empty out and this side here is just going to hang on. So that could potentially be a huge problem. I don't know how to solve yet. Yeah, currently my system isn't too excessive, admittedly. So it's going to be fairly low effort to actually replace this. I just want to make sure we get the basic layout right. So on this side, we want to craft things. And we're also going to do this with speed beacons, meaning for most recipes, we're only going to need one machine. We then have our assembling machines. Let's do three together. So these are going to be the three belts. And then we need another robo port over yonder. This would be transport belt, this would be the underground belt, and this would be the splitter. And then we do the next tier, namely all the red stuff, and then obviously one more row for the blue belts. Is this really where I want to start my crafting system? I mean, we could go even further down, what do you say? If we add some more robo ports here, another one there, come on. We got then everything powered up. I wonder how I can do this with the robo ports. They're gonna get in the way if I just continue. So I think instead I'm gonna center this a little bit more. And we could say we start approximately here. Looking good. We now want to make sure we get some storage and requested chests in the joint. And let's say the storage chest is always gonna be on the top. So this is where we collect the end product. And then the requested chest is gonna be at the bottom bottom okay for some machines we're gonna need faster inserters so i will have to do that individually and of course doing this with the beacons might be a total complete overkill yeah i'm not so sure but at least we will be able to use some of these modules hmm actually that makes me think maybe we just add speed modules inside of the machines and forget about all the beacon stuff this way we'll also have way more space so we're gonna start with a requester chest here at the bottom and then a Assembling machine and then finally the storage chest. I think this is just gonna be much better And then how do we want to power this? Hmm for symmetry's sake We might just leave a little bit of space free and then we fill everything up with speed modules So the machines are still fast, but we will be able to set up way more machines this way 
I think I'm gonna start placing these right here. And then at the bottom, we can have some beacon setups for things we know we need like thousands and hundred thousands of such as the concrete. I wonder if we should have done that here as well for the modules. At the moment, I'm crafting them here. I'm also crafting the beacons here. But technically, we could exchange this, bring the system over here. So we have everything together that is concerning my own inventory. Anyways, now that we thought about the concept a little bit, it's time to set up all of these machines. As a matter of fact, I might want to copy them over first. And we're going to do this layout. It's going to be spread out a little bit more than necessary. But it's going to be much easier to keep the overview. All of these items here go without saying. The belts, of course. All types of inserters and all types of power poles. I had one machine free here, so I'm crafting the chests as well. I'm going to be crafting all the logistics stuff. Also, robots, of course, but we still need the flying robot frames. I would like to see some train stop, rail signals, basically everything. Everything. I don't want to craft anything on my own anymore. Even lamps we're going to do. We're going to do some wiring and all of that stuff I also want to request. And this is going to be a very important step in us being way more efficient. Yeah, we're gonna have to do all the assembling machines, which means we also have to craft some speed modules. Even repair packs I want a bunch of and also ammo for my Spider-Tron. However, we are currently not producing the explosives. Let me actually see. For the explosives, we would need the sulfur. Darn it. <laughs> well, I guess in this case, I'm also not gonna exclude the sulfur from this product line. But yeah, it would be great to be able to build more cliff explosives. And as such, we will also have to craft grenades and barrels. So I'm gonna add coal and sulfur to this line. I think I might actually have to place another roboport. Yeah, look at that. So we already know the next roboport is gonna go here. And then I guess we can just keep going with the stations as far as we can take this. The good thing is we can just copy over stations. So I did that with the sulfur. Now let's find a coal station right there. Control right click to copy and control left click to paste and we already got these two stations set up next up i think i'm gonna go for the engine units electric engine units and then the flying robot frames so those are gonna be the next three materials the flying robot frames we haven't done yet so i'm gonna have to do this manually flying robot frame yeah you can see no trains for this just yet however we are already crafting engine units so i can copy this over and paste it right there and last but not least electric engine units i would also have to set up wonderful once that's done we can hook up the stations and some of the trains should already arrive we're only missing the iron sticks and that is because i don't have a train for this yet set and done i think we can copy this over and you can go as well good luck now we have flying robot frames and then the two engine units. Okay, all fixed. I think this is more or less everything we require to get this crafting system going. I'm gonna add approximately 500 robots to the mix. We can probably take a bunch of flying robot frames from our starter base, get this going. I just would like to see some logistics robots in this network. Approximately 500 should do. And then you can see they're already starting to provide me with the materials that I set up here. Alright, we're back and I made a couple of changes because I was too concerned about the robots taking unevenly from these passive provider chests. Instead, what I did now is daisy chain everything. Actually, I should still have an inserter there as well. And what this is going to do is bring everything over to the final chest. And the final two chests is what I'm actually observing now. We can store 9600 iron plates in there, stackable up to 100. And so I had to change the station to only allow trains if we have fewer than 4k. That means both of these chests are half full or the last chest is full and the second to last chest is empty. At this point we will be sending in a new train. I think this is going to work for most of the materials. I changed it for everything. I might have to do that inserter still though. And so I would say that is a dramatic change that is hopefully going to help us. It is also going to make it easier for me because I can see what materials we are storing and here with all the inserters and cables it's kind of hard to see. Anyways, I completely took apart the crafting system of the previous base. As you can see, everything is gone and has moved over. And we're just going to keep going like so. Right now I started with the pipes. The next thing would be the train stuff. So we do some rails. Let me actually set up some assemblers here. We want to do train stops and signals. We also want to do locomotives and cargo wagons. I'm also going to make the fluid wagon. 
and I don't think we need the artillery wagon, though it would be great. Just for completeness sake, I think we can do it. I mean, we have all the materials, why not? I also would like to make the rockets for my spider, even though lately I'm not using them as much because of the awesome energy weapons. And then I think eventually I might also want to make the atomic bomb. So we're just going to leave some space for that as well. Okay, time to copy over the requester chests and everything. And all we have to do is bring in the necessary materials. Unfortunately, that also copied over the recipe. So let's change it again. And yeah, I would say this way it's gonna be pretty straightforward. I have only done the belts here just yet, but let me actually get that started again. And we are not crafting belts because of course this storage chest is already full. Well, let's see, we need to request some iron plates and transport belts here. And I'm also always gonna do two stacks. So also two stacks of transport belts. Wonderful. Then obviously we need more and more logistics robots in that system. But that's honestly just going to be a matter of time. I also think for now I want to get rid of the basic materials in my inventory and we want to limit us to only building materials and then in the end we can decide if we still have space for emergency crafting materials. Before I forget I also want to set up all the assembling machines and we're going to need something special here. Yeah, the speed module. So that is a little bit of a bummer. I don't like to craft that here. But what you're going to do... Here I'm also crafting lights and we're gonna craft the red and green wires as well. Great, let me progress with that system a little bit and I'm gonna be right back. Alrighty, as you can see, some time has passed. I programmed in most of the very important items and I also decided to move the entirety of my module production as well as solar power crafting infrastructure. So if we have a look at the map all the way over here, I took apart the entirety of those two crafting systems. We're gonna replace them with another material. And now whenever I need a material, no matter what, even the beacons right here, they are being crafted. As you can see, everything is gonna be available in this place. Now, just a couple of hours ago, I read a comment about my power situation and that was just absolutely helpful. Why not go ahead and actually disable crafting systems that are not being active? The problem is, even if a crafting system isn't active, it is still using the beacon power. And that is a huge issue. We can easily solve that using power switches. Let's craft one of those. We need to add that, for instance, right here. Then we take some copper cabling. First of all, I want to take away the connection here. Then we're going to connect to the power switch and from the power switch to the pole. Now what we can do at this point is also register what we have in the station. So I'm going to go from the station. Well, actually the station isn't important. Yeah, we don't even have to hook that up. All we want to do is hook up all of these chests together. I want to make sure I'm not missing anything here. Then I'm gonna go to the power pole and finally to the power switch. In the power pole we can see 230,000 items is what we currently contain in these chests. I just want to be sure we calculate this correctly. 200 is one slot for the copper cables times 48 slots would be 9600 and we have 24 of these chests. So that's 230,400 spare. I would say we're gonna try it with this number. So let's do this, copper cables, that's what we want to track, 230,000. And if we have fewer than 230,000, then we want to activate the system. So now the copper cables are only gonna run as long as a train is actually picking them up. Now this train is currently completely full, so we're just waiting for the copper cables to fill up again. And as soon as that happens, then the entirety of the contraption should shut down and not use any power. We are at 228,000 items, we just need 2,000 more, come on, we can do it, and then this should be shutting off. Hopefully it's gonna work, and holy cow, this is gonna save us so much trouble, because, yeah, look at that, not all the systems need to be active. Now, of course, the flashing could get annoying at points, but man, this actually changes a lot. Let me copy this over, maybe we can replicate this for the top part. What if I just paste this over and um, then we still have to remove the cabling here between these two power poles. And of course we need another power switch. There you go. And that should also be doing the trick. Yes, this is amazing. And we're going to do a six chest setup for all the loading stations so we can work with similar numbers. And if we have a stack that can only stack to 100, then we have to half the number. And if we have a stack that only goes to 50 or 10, we just have to change the power switch condition accordingly. 
Another contraption I already did this with are the iron sticks. However, here I forgot to actually hook up the chests. Now I wonder, uh, let me go ahead, remove this cabling. And then I just want to know if I could generally copy over the layout. So grabbing this, I shouldn't run into any issues. Uh, apart that we cannot place the poles. Yeah, let me just go ahead, replace everything here. And we're going to insert it right there. And it should be working, except, let's see. Yeah, they stack to 100, so we want to swap that to probably 115,000. And will you look at this cheaty little bugger? There we go. Those are the connections I want to see. But yeah, you get the basic gist. I'm gonna be doing this for all the stations. Everything that isn't running at the moment, we will be saving on power. And this is just absolutely ridiculous. And together with our new crafting system, with all the materials available, we can now basically progress much faster, in my opinion. Everything at the starter base is now dedicated to only doing the research. So we will be researching for one science pack per second. Looks like I still left some things to clean up. I need to power some beacons, but generally this base is now doing what it is intended for, just doing some research passively. And then once we start with the research here in the mega base, we can take apart the starter base completely. But yeah, I would say with that out of the way, we are gonna wrap it up. I'm so happy that I have built this crafting system finally. It's gonna be making things so much easier for us. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. Have a great time, and hopefully I'm gonna catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.